Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Sean McKay, aka The Lousy Investor. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics in investing. And that is the debt snowball pay down plan. This is a strategy that my wife and I have actually used quite a few times with our rental properties. This is something that is really effective if you're trying to increase the cash flow that you have from assets, or if you have debt, like let's say credit card debt or uh, school loans, something like that, that can be useful for this as well. So uh, stay tuned. This is going to be really helpful for those of you that are trying to work through this idea of how to pay down the debt and in which order. Okay, so the first thing we should do is just simply define what the debt snowball method is so that we're all on the same page as far as how we can utilize this strategy. So with the debt snowball plan, it's a scenario where you have a few different buckets of debt. So maybe you have some credit card debt, maybe you have a mortgage on your house, maybe you have student loan debt, and you're trying to figure out which order you're going to pay those off in. So the first thing you'll do is certainly make the minimum payments for all of those different sources of debt that you have. So you make your minimum balance for your credit card, your mortgage, your student loan debt, whatever sort of debt you currently have. And then with the snowball method, what you're doing is you're taking the lowest balance debt and you're putting as much money as you can each month into that instrument. So for example, if you have $5,000 in debt on a credit card, and let's say you have $30,000 of debt of student loans, and you have $200,000 of debt on your house, you're going to pay off that smallest balance, that $5,000 in credit card debt first to knock that out so that you can then take the additional money that you would have had to put towards your credit card debt each month and then put that through to the uh, student loan debt as the next lowest debt element. And before you know it, you no longer have any debt there. So that's the basic concept with snowball debt. You're just attacking the smallest balance debt first. Now, there's special circumstances for everybody. Everyone has different preferences and needs and wants. So to me, there are a couple of scenarios where the debt snowball plan is going to be the ideal way to deal with the debt that you have. So the first idea is when you have a few different sources of debt, but the interest rates are all very similar. So let's say some of your debt is 4%, some of it's 5%, some of it's maybe 6% debt. Those are all close enough where to me, it makes a lot of sense for us just simply to attack the debt with the lowest balance to just knock that out, get that out of the way. The second scenario where I think it's really helpful to use the debt snowball plan is if you feel like you're gonna get a huge psychological win if you're able to get something paid off. Because for a lot of us, when we look at all the different types of debt that we have, that can be really mentally draining. So you might have one rental property with a $50,000 balance. You might have another property with a $150,000 balance. So it's gonna be much easier to attack that $50,000 balance, get that sucker paid off, and then you can use that additional cash flow to work towards that $150,000 mortgage. And when you pay off that first mortgage, at least for us, psychologically, we feel like there's even more cash flow that we're receiving than the amount that we don't have to pay to the bank. It's kind of this magnifying effect where we feel like, okay, this property is really creating actual cash flow for us now that there's no longer a mortgage on it. And the last scenario where I feel like using the debt snowball method is extremely helpful is if you're still in the growing phase and you wanna get the safest kind of debt that you can get, which for many people is going to be conventional loans. And with conventional loans, typically you can only get 10 loans in your personal name. And so if you've kind of hit that limit, uh, this is something that my wife and I experienced at different points in our career. We would then say, okay, if we're gonna get additional debt, we wanna get conventional loans, that great 30 year fixed government product. And so we would look at our portfolio and we would see which balance was the lowest. We would then go and work to get that property paid off, which would then create a scenario where we had an additional mortgage that we could get from a bank. And then we could go and get some great 
low interest, long-term debt. So even if you're in the building phase for your investing portfolio, the debt snowball method can be really, really helpful for you. So hopefully there was some good value in there for you today. Please feel free to hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done that already. And we'd love to get some comments from you as well. Thanks so much.